God is good. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God. It's anecdotal, but I can't help but wonder and observe that there are more homes being decorated with uh, demons and ghosts and skeletons in my neighborhood than is normal. I'm wondering if that's because in reaction to miss, perhaps missing one Halloween celebration during the lockdown. So with Halloween coming up, I would remind you to stay away from our popular culture's warped way of celebrating the dark side of our human existence. However, this doesn't mean you should avoid once in a while a good ghost story. In fact, today's gospel from St. Luke is a frightening account, as good as any classic ghost story, a story that should make anyone's hair stand up. There's a demon-possessed man, but that is not what is frightening. This man has been naked and homeless for years. He hangs around a cemetery. He shouts at Jesus, but that is not what frightens people in this gospel text. When Jesus exercises the demons, he allows them to go into a herd of pigs that go wild and run off the cliff to their deaths. And yet that is not what is frightening to the people. Notice what scares the people. St. Luke writes, when they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone out, sitting at Jesus' feet, dressed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. Amazing. I've got to tell you, if I'm walking down the road and some naked man comes out of a cemetery yelling at me, that would unnerve me. But in this town, in this country of the Gadarenes, opposite Galilee, these people have become accustomed to this. What frightens them is that this man who was evil, overcome with evil, has now been healed and he's good. What frightens them is the holy, not the unholy. What are we really afraid of is the holy because the holy demands change. Tragically, these people of the Gad- living in the country of the Gadarenes are overwhelmed by Jesus' holiness. They have accommodated evil for so long and are so accustomed to it that holiness, Jesus' holiness, now becomes something shocking even unbearable. So they can live for years with a crazy, demonic, naked demoniac who wanders the local cemetery. But Jesus comes along and they say, and they ask him to depart from them, for they were seized with great fear. Verse 37, how do we react to the presence of Jesus? Perhaps we are fearful because we have never personally experienced this before. I have a minority theory as to why holy confession is not taken seriously by enough of our people. I really think that many people raised in the Orthodox Church, so-called cradle Orthodox, have perhaps never even articulated a personal faith in Jesus. They fear the unknown. The people feared Jesus because the healing, the change of the demoniac, demanded a change in them. A change they did not want, they did not feel they needed. Change can be upsetting for all of us. They wanted things just as they were, and Jesus was threatening the status quo. The thought of the kind of change that Jesus would bring was tormenting to the people of this region, They wanted Jesus to go because he was getting too close to home, getting too close to where they lived, threatening their livelihood, the raising of swine. So does the presence of Jesus come too close to where you live? Is it possible showing us our need to live in a different different life and we just don't want that? 
Is that why we resist him? Our misplaced priorities, our warped values, our apathy become such a strong indictment that it's sometimes easy to say to Jesus, just go, leave me alone. But you didn't come to church today with that in mind. We are here in this morning, this morning to claim the exact opposite, so beautifully articulated in the last book of the New Testament, the book of the Revelation. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And the bride and the spirit say, Come. And let him who hears say, Come. And let him who thirsts come. Whoever desires, let him take the water of life freely. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Jesus healing that naked demoniac is yet another illustration of how God is always descending to be with us. At the clergy, national clergy retreat last week, the archdeacon of the patriarchate Deacon John Chrysavis challenged us clergy and kind of almost scandalized a few of us. He says the divine liturgy and the sacred space where we gather is the perfect prism for the Holy Spirit to descend upon us. Our worship provides a portal to come to our senses, as did that demoniac, to be at home, yes, to be comforted, and to be comfortable in his presence. He went on to say, the primary purpose of the liturgy in this particular space at this particular time is not prayer. It's not even Holy Communion, but to experience forgiveness together, to love one another, and to confess with one heart and one mind that one is holy, one is Lord, Jesus Christ, to the glory of God the Father. So we hear here and the, we invoke the Spirit. The Holy Spirit descends on us. And notice what happens as we offer bread and wine. The prayer for the consecration says, having taken bread in his holy, pure, and blameless hands, having thanked, blessed, and sanctified it, he broke it and gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, for the remission of sins. So this is what we celebrate. This is the focus of our worship, brokenness. We join that demoniac in his brokenness, and even Christ comes to us broken. That's why the words of institution are so central to understanding how we are saved. He who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new, but in his brokenness, we celebrate our brokenness. So as we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, as we come today to remind each other that we need each other, and the focus of our celebration, the focus of our worship is tsichorisis, beautiful, a beautiful, from that beautiful word in Greek, tsichorisis means literally to share the same space. Seeing chorises, seeing meaning together, hora, space. So that's why we're here, to love one another, to share in God's love, to receive the descent of the Holy Spirit, to manifest our brokenness. So let us always rejoice and never be ashamed to, be, to sit at his feet, cleansed and healed. Again, for one is holy, one is Lord, Jesus Christ, to the glory of God the Father. Amen.